The Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. EliteForm.com, IgnitionAPG.com, PlayUSA at PLAEUSA.com, and Soranex Exercise Equipment at Soranex.com. And now, the Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast. Welcome to Iron Game Chalk Talk with your host, Ron McKeefer. Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! Everything you got! On this podcast, hear Coach McKeefer's straight talk about training, featuring the top strength and conditioning professionals from around the world. And now, here's your host, Ron McKeefer. Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Talk Talk. I'm your host, Rob McKeefrey, and this is episode number 144. Excited to have Sean Manuel with us. Sean is the head strength coach at Bishop Gorman High School out in Las Vegas. Uh, does a fantastic job. Their success is undeniable. And uh, really excited to share this episode with you guys. Talk about a lot of great things. His journey as a, as a professional athlete and then as into into coaching, some of the mistakes that he's made along the way and how he's learned from them. And then just, you know, basically the, the secret to their success and what, what has led to Bishop Gorman being one of the top perennial uh, football programs, but other sports as well uh, in the country. So tons of tons of great stuff in this, in this episode. Before we get started, though, I want to make sure we recognize our sponsor for this one. This is Ignition APG. Uh, Ignition, obviously, it's, it's combine time and um, you know, they are a performance facility based in Cincinnati, and they have a major uh, component of their of their overall uh, program that is, is combine prep, and, and they do a fantastic job to bring guys in, and, and more so than all, and most of the, the performance facilities that I've seen, they get guys that are, are fringe guys that mess, weren't necessarily draft guys um, that end up going off and doing some phenomenal th- things. I mean, Luke Keekley was a, was a guy that was obviously heralded a little bit, but has done phenomenal, phenomenal things and, and came through their system. But um, I want to make sure you guys know about their, their speed certification. Their speed certification, it's actually going to be April 21st and 22nd in Cincinnati. But uh, it's right out Cincinnati at Prasco to Prasco Laboratories, where it's their parent company. And uh, I did this a few years back, got certified. Our staff's going down this year to get certified. Um, and they do a, a fantastic job with it. And I think sometimes with certifications, it's important for you to be able to show advanced training and different aspects of things. A lot of times just to head things off. I mean, just to be able to head things off with your coaches. Hey, look, I, you know, do you have a certification in this or not? I, you know, I do. So therefore, let's, let's yield to me and my expertise in this area, that's that's one way to use this. The second way to use it is it's very they're very knowledgeable in this area. Obviously, training you know hundreds of athletes uh, to become fast, faster for the for the combine, and they've had records set and, and all those things. And so um, Ben and and Cliff and and Chad and everybody there do a phenomenal job and uh, great people first and foremost. They do it mind, body, and spirit. But then they also putting out some fantastic product products, including their their speed certification. So I'd recommend you do that if you can't make it. They do offsite certifications as well, uh, but reach out to them and uh, and they'll follow up with you about what what it takes to to set one of those up. Lastly, before we get started, I want to make sure we're, we're, we all know about my newest podcast, Ask Coach Mac. Set this up just as a way to me for me to be able to answer a lot of the questions that I get all the time. I uh, want to be able to do that so I answer it and, and, and share it with the masses as opposed to uh, one email at a time. And, and something early on in my career, I wanted to make sure that I got back to everybody uh, through email, phone calls, things like that. And quite honestly, it's just gotten to be too much, you know, and being able to stay up with everything. Um, and so uh, I started this as an effort just to kind of be able to give back, answer questions I think a lot of people would uh, identify with. And uh, made it super simple. You just got to go to askcoachmacmac.com and uh, scroll to the bottom. And there's a widget there or on the sidebar where you can send a voicemail. Just send your voicemail question. Um, and if it's something that I think that everybody would benefit from, then we'll definitely uh, include it on the show. And go to iTunes, subscribe to it on iTunes, and um, you'll be able to uh, hear all the different episodes and um, gotten great feedback so far. Hopefully it continues to be that, that way. And 
Uh, hopefully, it's a, it's a great resource for everybody. But want to get to this episode, sit back and enjoy, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, guys. Hey, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. Excited to have Sean Manuel with us today. He's the head strength coach of Bishop Gorman out in Las Vegas. And if you know anything about high school football, you know that they are a power, not just in football, m- multiple sports, but they are a powerhouse. And, man, I wanted to have you on the show just to talk a little shop. So appreciate you coming on, man. Ron, I appreciate you having me on here, buddy. Hey, Charlie, let's go into your story a little bit. Kind of how how'd you get into strength and conditioning, and then what's led you to Bishop Gorman? You know what? I, a couple of things. I think um, early on um, playing, uh, I got an opportunity to play in college, Division One scholarship. Um, I got drafted to the NFL, San Francisco 49ers, 1996 with my twin. And I think, you know, during that time, my quest was always how do I get better? Uh, what's the things out there? What are the modalities out there that will help me get better, to you know, increase my performance, uh, make me stronger, make me a better athlete? And I always had a hunger to understand those things to get better uh, when I was playing. And I accumulated, I believe, a lot of knowledge. Like, I, I, you know, I read a lot of books, sure. even in college. The strength coach was one of our best friends. His name was Henry Schroka. He's now um, a scout for the Dallas Cowboys. And he was like our dad there. And he would always share the books. And, hey, this is, you know, rate of force, or this is this. Or he would talk to us about all these different things on plane flights. And and always pricked my curiosity. And so... I think when I got done playing, the other side of it was I had a lot of injuries that happened, and they, you know, they they, they shortchanged my career uh, from different uh, movement patterns that I had that I didn't know were dysfunctional. Or I needed to correct them, or I had these imbalances and so forth. And so when I got out and started to have to work with some of these different things, um, being you know, I got permanent medical from uh, the NFL. When I had to start working back and rehabilitating on my body, I started learning a lot of corrective measures that if I would have known before could have, you know, put some time on my career, would have spared me a lot of different uh, injury uh, situations I got into. With those kind of things in mind, I started thinking, hey, what do I do with all this information? I'm done playing. What can I do with it? Right. And the, the best fit I could see, I love young men. I love seeing young men grow. I love seeing their character evolve and see them maximize their potential. And it was as good a feeling to me doing that as it was me playing, scoring, or any other different things. And I said, hey, what I'm going to do with this information I got is go give it back and see how I can help the next generation avoid some of these pitfalls, achieve some of their goals, maximize who they are as young men and people. And as I did that and saw it, I I found a tremendous amount of fulfillment in it. And it just kind of feeds itself every year. I go, how can I get better at what I do? How do I help more with these imbalances? You know, how do I, you know, Make us more injury resistant. Okay, how do I increase performance? And it's just kind of evolved from there in that passion sure. uh, and, and, that, and that love for seeing people get better. What were some of the places that you'd work to kind of get to where, you, where you're at now? You know, some of the biggest influences were coming out of college, um, uh, NFL, um, watching what guys did. I was under Matt, you know, uh, Mike Barnes and some other different guys who did a great job. Yep. Um, I got to California High School, and I started to implement uh, what I knew then was NASM, uh, the National Academy of Sports Medicine, because when I got done with football, everything was so performance-based, but not right. corrective-based, and so I really drew to that towards that NASM. It was very corrective-based, like, sure. hey, you got muscle length tension discrepancies. You need to iron them out, otherwise you get these compensation injuries. Um, a weak glute, you know, gives you that vulgus in the knee and, and the vulgus of the knees was causing these you know media collateral stretches and these lateral meniscus tears um, because of the impingements and I'm looking at it going oh this is really fascinating that where I started after I got done with pro ball I started doing it in the high school right uh, and then kind of implementing these programs stability stuff um, uh, uh, after the stability stuff we did a lot of flexibility mobility stuff and so then the head guy said, hey, you want to start doing this, I'll pay you. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll do it. And then the school said, hey, if you want to, you're doing a good job with them, hey, we'll pay you to do the whole school. Right. And then another school said, hey, if you do it, we'll pay you. We'll give you a contract to do it. And kind of built from there. Tony Sanchez got the job down here at Bishop Gorman. Absolute gold mine in terms of uh, resource, athletes, um, support from the administration. He asked me to come down. I didn't come down initially. And then... Um, things kind of dissolved in the school district up where I was at, and I, he said, hey, I got a full-time job for you down here. 
high school strength conditioning, there's benefits, you know, X, Y, and Z. This is, you know, you're on salary. This is what you got. Right. Um, and for life choices, I made a decision to come down. And it was one of the best decisions I've sure. ever made. It evolved from there in terms of learning, being able to devote myself full time. You know, it's just for football. Um, I built library understanding, um, things that we did every year we got better and things that we we're trying to get done. I got better in my understanding and we were able to build this facility, this 36,000 square foot facility with an 18,000 square foot floor, wow. um, where I was able to design it and help with it from, with the architect from start to finish. Huge experience. Um, we had Kaiser air units where we ran the conduits under the ground. Um, they give you the power output and they're the power racks. Right. We got the performance trainers, the triple trainers. Um, we got 22 racks uh, with those four Kaiser racks included. Um, you know, eight Vertimax. I mean, we just, the things they allowed us to do to create a an environment where we can make people as good as we can possibly make them. Right. Was created, and it's the most unique situation, one of the most unique situations I've ever seen uh, right. in the country in terms of people's commitment to. You can see it behind you. Oh, kids is getting better. I mean, you know, back there, with it. it's got a 60-yard track and so forth. So anyway, wow. that was kind of my progression, my evolution. That's yeah. where we're at now yeah. in terms of the kids. The result has been, you know, we've won seven state titles consecutively. Um, we've won two national titles, USA Today national titles. And so it's been, you know, the success has been, has followed. But the reality of it is, it's, you know, it's been the support behind it and the work and the effort that's gone in. And those things are just kind of the the fruition and the fruit of that effort. No doubt. No doubt. Well, obviously you've had lots of successes there and, and with success obviously comes opportunities. And so, I mean, it's, it's obvious just in talking to you just before and, and, and on camera here that you have a heart and a passion for young people, you know, yeah. and there was probably opportunities to maybe even go back to the NFL or maybe go to a major college or, but you've chosen to be working with the high school athlete. What is it about the high school athlete that, that motivates you to wake up every day and go to work. You know, high school and high school is probably the most pliable the young men will ever be. It's the most influential time of their lives. They're coming out of you know going into adolescence and going through adolescence into adulthood. They're forming a lot of their perceptions about life and you know what it means. Um, you know whether to be a man. Um, if, if it's the women's sports, what it is to be a, a woman, which I can't necessarily help with. <laughs> <laughs> but the man part. That's the part that drive. I, I see the biggest growth in these kids, but in their character. Right. What they become as people. Their willingness to take in what you're saying and go, hey, I'm going to change my, my, my worldview or my life view in order to build my life. I'm going to let go of these false realities, or this, this thinking that I have that's detrimental, self-destructive, that I think is valuable, but it's not. Mm -hmm. And they start to see it, and they can kind of piece those concepts together. And I watch those kids as they go on. Alizé Jones is a good example. He's, you know, he played at uh, Notre Dame this year as a true freshman. He was one of the number one tight ends in the country. He called me this year and was like, Coach, which you, you know, is invaluable. Mm -hmm. What you said and what you did, we're so prepared. You know, we're the, we feel we're the most prepared kids here at Notre Dame. We're able to, I'm able to walk in and play. I'll be starting next week. And I said, oh, yeah, 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 with the strength and conditioning and the other thing. And he said, no, Coach, life, the things you teach about, life, the things you guys talk about with life, how important that is to you, your message, you know, whether it's the scriptures, um, you know, the thoughts, right. uh, the inspiration, the constant reminder of what's important and putting what's most important in front of you and not losing yourself in the moment sure. and the momentary urges. So anyway, those are the things that make high school so rewarding to me personally. And I have, I've had, you know, three or four different offers and I'm not opposed to it or not opposed to it, but what I have here is very special. It's going to take a lot to yeah. kind of pull out of it and, and, and do it because of the love for the kids um, and then also the support and what we're able to create. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more. And that's ultimately why we go into coaching, isn't it, to make an impact on young people's lives? Biggest thing. No doubt. No doubt. And if you're in it for any other reason, then it's it, it'll, chew, it'll chew you up and spit you out. And oh, and the kids recognize it and they don't, they don't yeah, respond. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Well, I'm sure, you know, and, and you know, with that, kind of that's a good segue into with that, you, you you know, as a young coach, you'll make lots of mistakes. I mean, you make mistakes every single day. I make mistakes every single day. What, what's, what's maybe the biggest mistake that you've made with your athletes or with your administration, with your coaches? And then how did you learn from that? So some of the biggest things early on, 
um, not pro make, making decisions to program kids based on my experience, not on research or data, um, not being um, well educated in terms of an approach uh, with the kids, overloading them. And this is what I mean. I came out of the NFL. I came in and thought, hey, everyone can train at this point or do these things. Sure. And overloaded kids early, you know, shut down some nervous systems. Right. Um, made some decisions that put some kids in a compromised area. And then, you know, then, you know, philosophy, hey, you just got to get tougher uh, versus, hey, we got to create more mobility in your lumbopelvic hip complex and more stability there, too. Because if we don't, your spine's always going to be compromised. It doesn't, you're not about tough. You're just not mechanic. You're at a mechanical disadvantage. Sure. And you're squatting mechanic. Until we can fix that, I need to find another approach with you. Um, a one size fits all was was a you know kind of thing that in terms of making mistakes. And the other thing too is sometimes I can push incredibly hard in the ne- in the sake of helping a kid become his best, but I'm doing it through a way of motivation that I feel comfortable with. But it's not necessarily most beneficial for the kid. Right. And I still struggle with that. Is working to find what helps the kid. If I'm here for the young man's development, I need to find the frequency that helps the young man. And I've struggled in that. I did it yesterday. I jumped on a young man. He was underneath his load. I said, I told you 40%. You're at 20% back here on your single leg squat. And, you know, I dove into his character. You're an underachiever. It's this. It's this. And I see the kid's eyes get water. And, you, I was I was hot and saying, dude, I'm not. You're not doing this. You're not going to get away with underachieving. You're not going to be lazy. I'm not accepting it. You know, when I got went back and I thought about it, there's ways that kids respond to certain criticism, and then there are ways they don't. And me having to constantly evolve in that way, those are mistakes I make. Sure. That I go, hey, I got to continue to evolve in this area, and it's on a continuum. Right. I made it early in my career in terms of pressing kids too hard. Not having the best programming all the time, and still don't. But I go and people, you know, getting hurt, and that, instead of backing off, they're going, "Nah, you just need to be able to do it." Right. Um, and people getting hurt, the big mistake. And then two, the way I motivate and push and pull on young men at times, knowing when to find the kid's frequency, you know, and then also knowing when, hey, this is the standard. I'm not going underneath it. You know, right. I, I'm, I fight with that line every day. Well, it's something I always say on the show here, where you know, you can be. You can be passionate, but not, but without being emotional, you know. Yes, and I, I think that's something that's a big mistake with early young coaches is, you, you you know you love it, you chose this as a profession, so it's hard when people don't don't come in with that same type of yes. focus and intensity and all that. But the reality is is that they'll never love it as much as you do. That's not the, it's yes. not that's not what they're choosing to do with their life. But you can still be passionate. You can still get your point across. Um, so you can still hold people accountable, but um, but you don't have to be emotional. That's right on what you just said. Mm-hmm. I'm going to write that down, too, because i got to take that. I'm half black, half Sicilian. That means I'm 100% emotion. <laughs> <laughs> like I, so, but, but that's really, really good. That's right on. Yeah, Divorcing that's... the emotion of it and keeping the passion. No, I uh, agree with you. Phenomenal. Well, let's, let, let's break it down. I mean, you've had, like you said, seven state titles, two USA national titles. You know, obviously there's, I mean, you look behind you, there's a beautiful weight room, there's tons of resources and all that, but... Resource. There's lots of places with resources. They, you know, yes. What's What's the secret sauce? I mean, why have you been able to have so much success there from a strength and conditioning standpoint? It's funny, Ron. We just talked about this the other day, and it was actually a reporter in. This is it. It's an uncompromising, unwavering commitment to work ethic and to building character, hand in hand. The weight room is just a tool in the big picture of building a level of character, discipline, attention to detail, folk, a number of different traits that will build these kids' lives for the rest of their lives. And we commit to those principles. And we use the weight room. I just told you to do three sets of five, but with squats at 85% of your max. That's the tool. The bigger thing is, how are you going to do this? What's the level of enthusiasm? All right. What's the level of intensity that you bring today? What's your focus? And we're going to demand it. And if it goes underneath that, you're going to know that you're going to meet an unmovable force that's going to come in and go, now the standard doesn't change because your emotions change doesn't mean the standard changes. And so the biggest thing is, and we say it all the time, and like I said, I was talking to this reporter the other day because we're writing about the building. 
And I said, hey, man, the building doesn't come in in January 4th, right. first day back into school, and start going through hypertrophy. Right. Or start going through movement patterns and, and, and functional movement um, um, patterns and corrective exercise training um, corrections and all these other different things. And I said, who else is training right now? And he looked and said, so why don't you write about that and stop writing about the building? Um, and we have a friendship, so we're laughing sure. together. Yeah, sure. And I said, let's not write another one about the building or all the equipment that we have in there or all the money that they say Gorman has because that's not what's lifting the weights in January. Right. That's not what's busting their butt and sweating it out for these four months, five months, putting 40 pounds on their bench, 40, you know, 50 pounds on the squat, 20 pounds on the clean, two-tenths of a second on the 40. You know, two to three tenths of a second on the pro Julie. That's not what does it because the buildings here that kids don't get that from that. Right. They get it from the work they put in. And I think that's the biggest thing that separates us is that we just we grind, we work um, at an incredible um, pace, and we work uh, at an incredible intensity, and we sustain that, and the kids acclimate to it, and then they start living life there. Right. And then from there, we go and start competing. And for me, it's the accumulation that year after year after year, you keep separating yourself because not every, I, to me, I go, I just not everybody works that way. People give kids, go, hey, kids aren't going to come in. I can't get my kids to commit. I can't get my kids to do it rut you know, routinely. I can only get them to come in two days a week. I can't get them to start until July. I, you know, those are the things I hear at different times that I go, yeah, I've been at a public school and a private school. We've always had the kids. When properly motivated, they come in right from the jump, January, and then they work straight through. And the other great programs that I see, they do the same thing. Right. You know, the right. January to December, three weeks off, and they come back and they get after it again. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. We always talk about, you know, I talk to recruits, and I'll tell them that the reason why I chose the weight room as opposed to being a position coach was because every single day um, you got the opportunity to develop those life skills that are going to make you a success far after football, you know, and That's so you got to come with a plan. And, and when you get to the weight room, all of a sudden you get hit with a, in the face with this, this uncomfortable workout, you know, and yes. you have to respond. You have to, you have to uh, respond to adversity. You have to respond to success. You have to work as a team. You have to set goals and, and, and modify those as you go and pivot. And it's, I mean, it's just like a day in your life. You yes. Know? And so That's I, couldn't, exactly it. I couldn't agree with you more. Give me, you know, like you said, I mean, you, there's a lot of people that say they have great character. There's a lot of people that say they, they, they get, you know, they have a, they, they stress work ethic. Give me some specific, maybe something unique about what you guys do in the areas of character development or, and work ethic. Good. So what will happen is we come in and right when we come in, I'll usually set the tone. We'll sit down and say, hey, listen, this is where we're at now. And I'll kind of break down in the very beginning. Hey, we're going to introduce hypertrophy. There's going to be a point here where you want to quit. Whatever point you quit here, if you don't make a conscious decision to grow the next day and push it a little bit further, you'll stunt your growth. Mm -hmm. But if you do it here, this will be your approach towards life. So you're going to do it when you go on the field. You're going to go, so today, if I see you get to that point and I see you start to break, I'm going to hold you accountable. Discipline and love go hand in hand. If someone disciplines you, it's because they love you. They want to see the best for you. Right. Given that's the end. Given love's the end, right? Right. I mean, because you can be harsh and be disciplined and not have that. But I go... I tell the kids, hey, if I don't say anything, there's a problem. So what's the difference? We'll come in, and I'll put a scripture usually up on the board. Proverbs, hey, you know, he who loves discipline is wise, but a fool hates correction. <laughs> and we'll look at it, and I'll say, hey, if you're wise, okay, this is what we're going to talk about for the week. Everything the kids do, and they have footage of it, the minute I see a kid break, and I'll say, hey, go read the board, man. Because you get an attitude with me, but what's your attitude with? You hit a wall again, and you're mad. But who are you fighting with? And then the kids will say, myself. Yeah, yourself. Go look at the board. Right. This is what it feels like to be great. No, Remind right. yourself. Okay, we do that on a daily basis. We have a talk. We do a spiritual warrior talk. Um, and I did them at the, at the public school I was at, where we talk about life and what it really means to love yourself and love the community around you. And then when we go into the weight room, we hold them accountable on that. Like, well, wait, you're doing it again. How are you loving the community here? And I'm not. I'm, yeah, okay, I got it. And we do that year long. The other coaches do it too. Um, but in the weight room for four months, it's like that every day. Right. And they're held accountable to the things that we put up there until they take shape with those things. And don't get me wrong. There's still a huge deficit in character. We teach it. We preach it. There's a group that gets it. There's another group that just fights it tooth and nail. Right. 
doesn't want to get it. Um, try not to give energy to that group over and over again at, beyond a certain point. But it's not like because we have strong character kids, we have weak character kids that struggle with the idea right. that the talks just pull them into a less self-destructive disposition and make their descent slower. Um, you know, we got kids that get kicked out for behavior things and attitude things and, and, and inappropriate action things. Um, so I'm, it's not like we're, you know, we, we fight to build it in and I think it's pulled us to a certain point, but it's not like every kid here has great character. Yeah. Let's <laughs> no, just, just be real. Well, I mean, it's ultimately it's not, you know, what what the great thing about coaching and like you mentioned with your your tight end that went to Notre Dame. I mean, he, he you know, there's probably points in his career where he didn't always do everything right. You yes. know, and but you planted seeds and you know, and those seeds came to harvest when, you know, later on in his journey he figured out that, you know what, I can't get away from this. I can't escape this. You know, what did coach you know, what did coach teach me? And you know, those things always have a way of coming back in a big, big way. That's it. And uh, I couldn't agree with you more there. Well, man, hey, we, we always end these shows with some, some resources here. Give me, give me the best piece of coaching advice you ever received. The best one I ever received, um, one was Mike Solari. He's uh, with Green Bay Packers now, phenomenal coach. Uh, love him, best coach I'd ever been coached. One of the best coaches I've ever been around. One of the most influential guys I've ever been around. And... Um, you always tell me, "Hey, listen, um, you gotta, you know, you gotta love people. You know, you gotta learn to love. Uh, you know, people want to know how much you care, not how much you know, uh, to some degree." And and he was a guy who was always more so than what he said to me was the intensity that he coached me with on an everyday basis. And you know what? It was more than anything. What he said, it was his example on a daily basis, spoke to me and taught me uh, the most. And his commitment to seeing people be great, how he pulled it out, how much he thought about people's lives yeah, and how much consideration he took when he came out. He goes, hey, let's work on this today. Hey, let's get this in. Let's stay after and get this in and let's do this. And I just watched him very methodically and very uh, carefully bring my, bring a standard and expectation to me that took me from a rookie that was marginal to a guy who put himself in a position to start at the Niners and was playing at about as high end, you know, at the end of my rookie year in practice and other things like that as I ever had been. Right. And uh, a lot of it was his example, his push, his driving the way he thought about things on a daily basis. Oh, that's awesome. Important, important lessons right there as a future coach for sure. Big time. Yeah. What about a, um, a book, app, and website recommendation? Um, Book-wise, um. You know, one of the biggest books, I don't know, because it only falls into a certain spectrum, uh, that I've really appreciated was the Triphasic book yep. uh, by Cal Dietz. Um, not everybody can do that. I mean, obviously, you got to build general strength phases. And Functional Training by, um, uh, functional training by uh, not Mike, Boyd, but... Uh, Mike Boyle. Mike Boyle. Yeah. It was another one. Really good, basic in terms of uh, core stability and, and it really baseline stuff, getting some baseline uh, stuff down straight. Both those books have been really good resources um, for me. And then uh, the other resource I tell anybody who went to strength edition, whether it's an M FMS, functional movement screen, or CES, corrective exercise specialist by NASM, um, are huge in terms of understanding the kinetic chain finding deviations in that kinetic chain, force leaks in that kinetic chain, muscle and tension discrepancies in that kinetic chain, and then being able to address those right. in order to optimize the performance by building a great baseline. No, that's right. I agree with you. Uh, any apps or websites that you, you regularly go check out? In terms of apps, I don't really uh, have any apps. The website I go to is um, XL Athlete, yeah. um, which is uh, Cal Dietz and them's, and pull the uh, exercises out, which is an incredible platform and, and yeah. library. For exercise, I mean, the thing's free too, so I'm like, you know, I live on that thing, uh, looking at those resources and, yeah. and different ways I can kind of, um, you know, tweak things or, or add different exercises. Uh, that'd be the biggest one. That's the biggest one I go to. And then the NASM one I go to to do the corrective exercise profiling, print out the sheets for our, you know, our corrective exercise uh, protocols. Oh, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Cal does a fantastic job. 
And then the NASM with Mike Clark and what they did early on. Yes. I really, really enjoyed as well. But, well, man, it's obvious to me that you, you, you are uh, in it for the right reasons. And then, obviously, you know, that's led to some fantastic successes throughout your career. So, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show. and, and Absolutely. Uh, and sharing with everybody and, and just the way that you're going about your business. At Ron, I appreciate you having me on the show, buddy. I appreciate the time talking. even appreciate the things you shared. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest, as well as our sponsors, for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com, where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash Ron dot McKeefer. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Shop Talk.